tomorrow. Right now, 45 at O'Hare. Next news coming up at 9. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM560, The Answer. From the Matrix Home Solutions Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer, online at 560theanswer.com, on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. A buddy of mine just uh, texted this photo to me, which I tweeted out. Uh oh. This is uh, a is this sign. This is the artist. <laughs> that, no, no, it's not the former Fauci employee who turned. <laughs> Orgasm artist. artist. It's not her. Okay. Uh, well, you should tweet out a picture of her, too. Sign on the drive through window of a Burger King on Chicago's South Side. We are short staffed. Please be patient with the crew that did show up. Nobody wants to work anymore. Now, don't tell Joe Biden that because he lives in a la-la land where he feels compelled to tell people that if they get a good job offer, they should take it, even while discounting the notion that people are incentivized to stay home, and so that's what they're doing. We're going to make it clear that anyone collecting unemployment who is offered a suitable job must take the job or lose their unemployment benefits. There are a few COVID-19 related exceptions, so the people aren't forced to choose between their basic safety and a paycheck. But otherwise, that's the law. I know there's been a lot of discussion since Friday, since Friday's report, that people are being paid to stay home rather than go to work. Well, we don't see much evidence of that. That is a major factor. We, we don't see that, that look, it's easy to say the, the line has been, because of the generous unemployment benefits, that it's a major factor in labor shortages. Americans want to work. Americans want to work. As my dad used to say, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity, your place in the community, being able to look your kid in the eye and say everything's going to be okay. I think the people who claim Americans won't work, even if they find a good and fair opportunity underestimate the American people. So we'll insist that the law is followed with respect to benefits, but we're not going to turn our backs on our fellow Americans. It's the typical mm -hmm. fork tongue sophistry you expect from a dope like Biden. I'm bringing up his dad again. He, he feels the need, you know, this is, this is uh, where we're, we're uh, casting uh, low expectations on the American people. No, we're not. We're just recognizing a fundamental axiom of the human condition. People respond to incentives. If you pay me more to stay home, then a lot of people are going to stay home because they're short-sighted when it comes to paying their bills. I'll just enjoy what I have right now, making more staying home. And then when that runs out, I'll be compelled to go back to yeah. some hourly job that I can get. And hopefully the, uh, uh, the, 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 the scarcity of available labor will have driven up the hourly wage by the time I decide I'm ready to go back. Uh, there's also, and, and I mean, again, we've heard from myriad individuals, business owners about the, the challenges with finding qualified workers right now. There was also uh, this guy who posted um, at the Margin Revolution. I'm a blogger and HR analyst in, in the talent acquisition space. I speak to chief human resource officers and organizational executives every day. And over the past 90 days, there's been a giant disconnect between something I frequently see economists saying in the media versus what the reality of the job market is. And that disconnect is basically the Biden disconnect. I hear so, uh, economists who are essentially ideologically disposed to prop up Joe Biden saying there's no evidence that people are choosing to stay home because they're being paid more to stay home, where actual employers are suggesting that's exactly what's happening. And they're begging for people to come and work for them. Well, listen to this one real quick. Uh, Ray's Higher Restaurants, he's in, this is a Chicagoan who has a, a message, a strong message, because they're trying to raise the wages, you know, for restaurant employees. If your wages can't compete with $300 a week of unemployment, you might need to rethink your business model. 
Right. This is the same thing that uh, this dope Stephanie Rule, lots of dopes around, uh, who apparently some NBC or MSNBC yeah, newsreader, yeah. but she has Deutsche Bank in her employment history, according to her Twitter handle. This is remarkable. Um, uh, wh- why is it that the unemployment benefits are too generous rather than the pay offered by employers too low? Pay more money equals find more workers. If margins are so thin, you cannot increase pay without passing it through slash losing customers. Your business model doesn't work. Businesses shouldn't operate if they have thin profit margins. Well, boy, that's going to put a lot of businesses out of business. Uh, If uh, the lockdowns weren't bad enough and the violence in big cities and not so big cities destroying businesses, that wasn't enough. Now you've got this uh, economic pablum from the president and his media handmaidens. Remarkable. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined by Amity Schles, board chair of the Calvin Coolidge Presidential Foundation. Oh, for a man like Calvin Coolidge again. Winner of the Hayek Prize and best-selling author of The Forgotten Man, A New History of the Great Depression, as well as more recently, Great Society, A New History. Amity, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Glad to be with you guys. Uh, so uh, Biden wants to be the new FDR, and he is, but um, in uh, a, a very negative way if you assess the two on the merits. Well, yes, what you're talking about is incentive. Right now, there might be an incentive to postpone getting a job. In the period of the 30s, the government also created incentives. What the government did is what we're going to do next, which is push wages up really high um, through law, through the, the, the great labor law, the Wagner Act. And this is doing something for the worker. Think of a supercharged minimum wage, right? And what happened was the employers weren't really recovered from the Great Depression, so they couldn't afford the wages. The government suggested they pay or insisted that they pay the companies. So guess what? They didn't rehire or they rehired more slowly. And that was the tragedy of the Great Depression. It's not enough in our school books, but basically upward wage pressure caused unemployment of over 10 percent for a decade that's why our parents and grandparents remember the depression because of 10 years of unemployment it's a different kind of problem but it's got a similar basis which is an arrogance of government that it can to incentives get the economy going of course they told themselves well higher wages well then people will spend they'll buy back the car if they work in an automaker that will quote unquote get the economy going but it didn't Instead, what it did was lock people out of jobs. In the 30s, people did want to work, and they couldn't because employers didn't have enough jobs at the government-mandated high wage to hand out. That was a total tragedy, which is why it's ironic that the president would lean on the New Deal in that way. The only reason President Biden can lean on the New Deal is nobody remembers it. Well, right, or they have a, it, they have a stylized uh, uh, version of, stylized. Of, the, of the New Deal history. FDR was one of our great presidents because New Deal, and that's about the level of analysis. Right, and in, in The Hill, which is a fun periodical, I'm, I'm trying out, uh, I have a column about this, it's substituting, uh, instead of facts, you're, you're offering nostalgia. Nostalgia is not a policy. Right. And as you wrote in your article, you said, you know, when Roosevelt ran for office in 1932, one in four workers were unemployed. And now fast forward to 2021, one in four people make more money staying home. So if Biden wants, you know, people to get back to work and saying, you know, if you get your job, don't, don't you know, don't resist it. Well, Amy... They're, 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 thank you so much uh, for this show and your economic emphasis. I love this. The analogy that works for that, where, where what we're seeing now happen before was in England. You know, today we don't use the word the dole. It's kind of a pejorative. You don't want to say he's on the dole, right? He, um, the dole was a real thing. It was the English unemployment. And the reason it, the word dole became a pejorative was because England discovered people didn't want to go back to work. The unemployment was just relatively too favorable. People kind of stayed home. Jobs were very tough in England at that time. I mean, working in heavy industry in the, in the 1920s was no joke, right? You could lose a hand if you went to work with a big machine. Um, so people tend to want to stay home too much. 
uh, and even in the, it, it was it was an infamous story. English people stayed home in the 20s, so infamous that Roosevelt himself, President Biden's model, said, oh, we don't want any dole in the United States, never. Um, it, it, the experiment was observed. The result was marked down in the notebook, and we didn't want to repeat it. Um, that's a very good example. Um, and, of course, in, in my own book, The Great Society, I, you know, Dan, Amy, I wrote that book a few years ago now. And I think looking back, the greatest error of Johnson's Great Society, Johnson is another Biden model, is that it didn't emphasize return to work, really. It emphasized more of a payment and welfare culture, and it institutionalized, cemented that culture. And we're seeing the consequences of that today, too. Entitlements were hardened into law, even by the Supreme Court in the 60s. They existed before, but they were hardened into law. Hardened. Um, the, hard. the idea that an entitlement is property in a case, for example, called, I think it's Goldberg v. Kelly. Um, that, that, well, you might be entitled to your entitlement the way someone's entitled to his patent. You know, that, that comes out of the Great Society period. Hardened into law in the Great Society, hardened into culture now. And you heard that in Joe Biden's message. I mean, you know, he's he's got to respond to Friday's jobs numbers. And so he responds by saying, hey, you know, get back to work. You sort of, you know, flippantly, hey, you know, you get a good job. Then, of course, you want to take that good job because you're a good American. But, hey, if you're afraid or if you're this or if you're that, all of the qualifications, then, of course, we're not going to force you to do something you don't want to do because, you know, your first order priority, as we were discussing earlier in the hour with uh, Professor Frank Ferruti, your first order priority is your entitlement, your human right to be safe. And we know what comes next, right? 20, 30 percent increase in wages because that's what will draw them. And guess what? A lot of employers can't afford that. It, 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 so so you get a kind of soggy economy. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite concerned about a repeat of the 70s. Oh, there's no inflation, but wages are up 30 percent or lumber's up 250 percent or uh, but kind of inflation denial is part of it, don't you think, guys? Yeah, oh, well, yeah. no question. Especially if you've been to the grocery store. I mean, every week it gets worse and worse and worse. I, I, you know, and, you know, it's interesting. That, I don't know if you followed it, but there's a big fight uh, going on among economists because even some of the economists associated with the Democratic Party, thinking here of Larry Summers, who's Treasury Secretary, are know too well what happens when you create this much money, and they're embarrassed. So you sort of see summer's agonistes, right? Uh, they, 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 they want to be loyal to the Democratic Party, speaking generally, but they want to, they don't want to, they want to, don't want to be caught out being uh, allowing too much inflation to happen. So they're, they're, they're in agony. Um, you can see it in the public statements. Of course, there will be and is inflation. There always is when you create money to this extent, and it will be larger than we imagine. You know, when you say that, you get penalized, hit on the head uh, by a Democratic Party economists, basically. But it, 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 we know it's the truth. So there it is. Well, yeah, you can't obviously uh, print that much funny money and not have inflationary pressure. Now, Scott Shalady, uh, Fox Business, we talked to on Friday. He makes the point, too, that part of this is everything is happening at the same time um, because of the, the nature of this. This isn't you know a business cycle. This is. You're shut down. Now you're open. So everybody's trying to do everything at the same time. And that uh, is in, in part explanatory. It doesn't necessarily portend what will ultimately happen over time as we try to unwind from all this, particularly with sort of uh, Jay Powell's, uh, I think, rather reckless disposition when it comes to uh, this profligate monetary policy and, and holding rates zero for another, I don't know, two and a half, three years. At least that's what he's suggesting. But but that but that's part of it, too. I mean, we're in such a unique place that's different than any other time in history because of the 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 self-imposed shutdown and then sort of reopening, uneven reopening state by state. But, you know, the, the overarching lesson, it's it just it, it's it's surprising to me that President Biden would lean on the New Deal in that way and lean on job creation through government in that way, because another aspect of the New Deal is there was job creation through government, and there were all these cool synergies, just as now we're going to have a Green New Deal. Well, Roosevelt had that, the reforestation plan, which sounds lovely. Some of our great-grandparents, grandparents, and so on worked in it. 
um, you know, chopping wood in the woods. That was better than no job, except it wasn't a permanent job. It was just a camp job for three months, six months. Um, and it wasn't really great for the economy because when the government creates jobs, it usually doesn't do it very efficiently. Uh, and synergy is way overrated when it comes to creating jobs. It's better to go to work for a company that makes one thing to its comparative advantage and really sells that thing, and do kind of whatever, than to have a make-work job. And, and you hear all over um, Biden's speeches now, oh, isn't it cool um, preserving, you know, I'm stopping global warming and creating jobs, synergy. That sounds very attractive politically, but economically it makes less sense. It's suboptimal to be polite. She is Amity Schles, board chair of the Calvin Coolidge Presidential Foundation, winner of the Hayek Prize and best-selling author of both The Forgotten Man, A New History of the Great Depression, and Great Society, A New History. Amity, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to be on the most sophisticated show. Thank oh, you thank so much. You. All right, we cut and print that. we got to print that. All right. <laughs> be part of a tease. Thank you, and she joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line.